Welcome to TV Burp. Man kisses police badge by accident on trial and retribution. <laughs> Graffiti dog on heartbeat. <laughs> and Harry Hill impression on Holby. Is that your masculine nutrition? Get the glasses, mate. Hey. Try a bit harder. Here, what'd you get if you cross a slime ball with a scumbag? You were never good enough for my sister, you slime bag. <laughs> a slime bag! <laughs> yes, it's EastEnders. And what's the least likely thing you can think of happening on Albert Square? Whistles. <laughs> Don't knock it. There are some interesting pairings on the square at the moment. I mean, there's Bobby Davro and Shirley. Why would I even want to try it on with another bird when I've won first prize already? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just for my own information, what were the other prizes in that <laughs> in that particular raffle? <laughs> Heather, meanwhile, was helping Shirley with the relationship with some very useful dress suggestions. I think this one says, rip it off and take me. <laughs> yeah. Have you got one that says, put it back on and leave? <laughs> hey? Let's go that one. <laughs> what I love about the Queen Vic, it's like any great East End boozer. You not only get a wide choice of drinks, you can also get a great conversation. Sorry, Em. All right. What can I get you? Uh, nothing. <laughs> Elsewhere, it seemed that poor Tanya had developed a bit of a thing for zips. at the door. What's it forgotten? Hello, Tanya! <laughs> Who's been watching Big Brother Celebrity Hijack? <laughs> yeah, it's a new... <laughs> it's a new format to replace Celebrity Big Brother. And I know a lot of you are thinking, why tinker with the format at all? It was, after all, perfect. <laughs> Dermot O'Leary is the new host, and you know when you're worried that something's not going to be that good, you try and convince yourself, don't you? By telling yourself over and over again that it is. This is brilliant. <laughs> genius, I love it. Uh, we are on a roll. It is brilliant. <laughs> this is genius. It's brilliant, and it can only get brilliant. <laughs> yeah, keep talking. <laughs> so, let's meet some of the contestants, all of whom have got a special talent. First up, there's Callista, whose special talent is music. She's a songwriter. She's actually written a song that's made big waves on the funky house circuit. I've got some funky house tracks out at the moment, and there's a song called Bongo Jam, which is taking over the funky house scene. I love to play my bongo in the morning. I love to play my bongos in the morning. I love to play my bongos in the morning. Everybody! <laughs> yeah, as I say, it's uh, <laughs> shaking up the funky house scene. <laughs> so, who else is there? Well, there's Nathan, who's very keen to win. People say it's taking part that counts, but I mean, if you think about it, which losers do you really remember? Uh, Hitler? Uh, <laughs> Judas, uh, <laughs> Gareth Gates, then <laughs> went through. So that's him. Then there was my favourite circus act, Victor and Amelia. All the food pushes her blood to the head, and sometimes when I go too fast, it bleeds out of her eyes. <laughs> Ooh, your eye, love. <laughs> Which 
brings us to our Big Brother Celebrity Hijack Highlight of the Week. Big Brother Celebrity Hijack Highlight of the Week. I don't want to give anyone any reason to want to, like, nominate me, because I know everyone's getting on so well, and they might think that they're just because 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 they're just Are you okay, Jade? I'm fine. <laughs> Extraordinary Animals, The Greatest Ape Now, a programme that followed Dr Rob Schumacher and his efforts to teach an orangutan called AZ how to communicate by using symbols. AZ is so clever that he can communicate with Rob using a new language system devised specially for orangutans. Let's start with an example from the vocabulary. Uh, this is the symbol for apple. A rectangle with a line through it, of course. <laughs> yeah. We'll make it a bit easier for the big guy. Symbol for an apple? Picture of an apple. <laughs> and it's hard enough for him as it is. <laughs> anyway, he's from Borneo. He wouldn't even call them apples. He doesn't speak English. <laughs> He'd call them something like, uh, nothing Fs or something. I never claimed to be an expert on the Bornean language, all right. <laughs> it seemed to me that Dr Rob was getting a little too involved with the orangutan. I wondered if there wasn't some ulterior motive to all his intentions. He is almost 30 years old. Uh, he weighs about 270 pounds, big cheek pads on the side of his face, big beautiful beard, uh, just a, a, a spectacular looking guy. <laughs> I reckon as soon as he's trained him up to say I do, he's going to ask him to marry him. <laughs> Not that I've got a problem with that, on your side. <laughs> Amazingly, AZ gets the hang of it. Oh yes, before long he's so good, he could get a job at Tesco's. Apart from food symbols, like banana... Tracy, you got me a price on Naffy Naffs, please? <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, AZ's so good, he's working the computer and everything. Even picked up the keyboards. <laughs> well, I was very pleased to see Hugh Fernley Whittingstall back on the box last week. Hi there. How are you doing? Can I interest you in my chicken game? Yeah, all right. I'll play a chicken game, too. <laughs> Imagine this is a section of a, a, a metre square of a huge chicken farm where they're rearing standard birds for, for Tesco or any other supermarket. How many birds would you be happy to see in this indoor space? Yeah, you got any other games? <laughs> I'm not sure I like the chicken game. <laughs> this, of course, was Hugh's chicken run and his attempt to change our eating habits. You've been watching Jamie. <laughs> His first move was to reduce the number of intensive chicken farms. So what's next? What if I set up my own intensive chicken farm? Yeah, you set up your own intensive chicken farm. <laughs> what? How does that work? Surely that means you've increased the number of intensive chicken farms. <laughs> no, it's an experiment, see? One half intensive, the other free range. Ah, and before you know it, he's got 3,000 baby chicks turning up, and they're such fun baby chicks, aren't they? If there was plenty of room for them as just hatched chicks, but it wouldn't be long before this was a densely packed house. <laughs> Over on the free range side. <laughs> Baby chicks, very fun. <laughs> They're not real, all right. <laughs> but big things from little acorns grow, and before long the chicks have become chickens, and it's getting a little uncomfortable in the barn. What animal of any kind would want to live in here? A fox. <laughs> Two foxes. Poor Hugh. Poor Hugh, part of the intensive farming method is the cull. I really don't want to kill another bird this morning. Well, don't then. <laughs> Your farm, open a tin of ham instead. 
Fish fingers are nice. <laughs> of course, on Channel 4, their big new idea was the big food fight between Jamie, Gordon Ramsay and Hugh Fernley Whittingstall to find out which was the better cook. But really, <laughs> there's only one way to find that out. Food fight! Welcome back to TV Burp. Tiny man on Emmerdale. How about... <laughs> Actors play pranks on the set of Primeval. What do you mean? I'm ridiculous. I'm just doing my job. <laughs> and Minty attacked by a rug on EastEnders. <laughs> Emmerdale now. And Daz had gone missing. His dad's look, done a little poster of him to help try and find him. <laughs> and naturally, Jack Sugden was desperately trying to find him. It's what you might call the Daz challenge. <laughs> Any sign of Daz? I wondered if you'd seen him. Any sign of Daz? <laughs> Have you seen Daz? You seen Daz? <laughs> no sign of him at the garage or Dale View. I've even been up to Seth's Hyde. No sign of Dad's, not even at Seth's side. <laughs> What's he doing here? I found him outside. Oh, he was outside all along. <laughs> <laughs> but the big excitement was the ballroom dancing competition, and there was a special guest judge. Your mother's got cataracts. She needs an operation. And she feels old and embarrassed. I haven't. I don't. Cataracts? Cataracts? Are you sure you're the eldest sister? Valerie? <laughs> Cataracts. <laughs> Cataracts. 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 Yeah, Carrots. <laughs> hey. Carrots. Lily had a canny way of remembering the dance steps. One, two, buckle my shoe. Three, four, knock at the door. Five, six, shouldn't you be in neighbours? <laughs> hey. Come over here. Hey. Edna has her own little rhyme. You know, my old friend Len, when he, he couldn't remember the steps, he had this little rhyme. <laughs> oh, come on, don't tell me. I bet it's racy. It's a part of <laughs> Sorry, I... <laughs> I didn't quite catch that. It's a part of <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, uh... <laughs> That's how I always remember the steps, too. <laughs> <laughs> that hat of Edna's, she never seems to take it off, does she? Well, she does. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Edna. No, of course, that wasn't Edna's hat. It was new show The Royal Today, which is based at the Royal, like on the show The Royal, but instead of being set in the 60s, it's set in the present day. What a brilliant idea. <laughs> Me of something. So this is casualty. Yes. <laughs> well, it's a bit like casualty, yes, but it goes out at four in the afternoon weekdays, and I'm not entirely sure it's the right thing for the tea time slot. Ah, I've got a little job for both of you. We're gonna need stool samples from each of the new admissions. You're gonna need a bigger <laughs> pot than that, love. <laughs> hey, a bigger pot. Otherwise, you're gonna have to pack it down with a biro. <laughs> What's another word for a curly-whirly?